Ladies and gentlemen, and for photographers who want to keep their files and folders organized, we're going to learn how to organize files and for folders. Here's how you get your points. Okay, at the top of your line paper notes, we're going to write down everything in red, including this right here, organizing files and folders plus naming conventions. Um, why are we doing this? Because you need to keep your stuff organized and be able to find your work. And then sometimes I need to go in and be able to find your work. And if it's organized, I'll be able to. If it's not organized, I won't be able to. Um, we have an awful lot of files in this class. Um, when you have a job, your boss might need to go into your folders and find your work. Um, so a bad thing happened to this kid one time. One time he had been working on this project for a really long time. And it was a, uh, it was a game that he was making in game design class. And he... He just named it the default name Project 001, and he never named it, right? He'd been working on it for months. And then the software Unity made another, he had made a brand new project with no work in it. For some reason, I don't know why. At any rate, that new one got dragged into the folder with his one he'd been working on for two or three months. And the two or three month one got deleted and copied over by the one that had no work in it, right? Because he never bothered to change the name. So you don't want to copy over, lose it. And the other thing is you don't want to have two versions of the exact same file because you, anyway, that just doesn't make sense because you might work on one one day and work on the other one the other day and then it's hard to combine the stuff. At any rate, um, make sure you write this down in your notes. All right. Um, so we know, hopefully at this point you should know that this is a folder, like this paper represents a file and the file goes into the folder in the same way on the computer. You have something like this, and you have a folder called Take Take Five Photos, right? There's the folder, and inside you actually have the documents and things that you use. So the folder just contains your files. The files are the things you actually work on. All right, so make sure you write that down. All right, part one, naming conventions. All right, so whenever you're taking a picture, like if you're going to take it, oftentimes if you're going to take a picture of just a person, you do a portrait, and it's going to be that way. It doesn't have to be, but it sometimes is. And if you're going to take a picture of, like, the land out there, you're going to do it landscape view. So that's going to be helpful for some stuff we're doing later on. Um, all right, so let's get right to the naming convention. So <coughs> the first thing that we're going to do to where you can find your stuff is whenever you have files, you're going to give them good names. <clears throat> so rule number one, avoid these weird symbols. Sometimes they don't just don't work very well. Some, it makes it hard to read. And then some of these symbols have special met, uh, uh, purposes. For example, the slash slash is how Windows um, identifies folders. And so if you put that in the name, you might confuse Windows. So avoid those weird symbols. Um, rule number two, don't use periods, um, except for at the very end. Because if you look right here, um, it says .jpg. That's the file extension. And so Windows knows that when you say dot, the file extension is coming next. And then it's like, oh, it's a JPEG. This is something I can open in, in Photoshop or whatever. So if you go in here and you delete that, um, it won't know what it is. Okay, so, so you're supposed to leave those file extensions alone. But um, I'm going to put it back. But don't just put random periods except for at the end, right before the file extension. Okay. All right. Um, a file extension indicates what what file type it is and what app should open it. So um, that's what those periods are for. So it, just like we showed you the .jpg. All right. Rule number three, keep it short, but describe it well. So you don't want your, your file names to get super long, super long, super long. So keep it as short as possible, but yet describe it really well. Okay, write that down. Rule number four, the file name should indicate all necessary descriptive information so that you can figure out what it is, even if you move it into a different folder. So, for example, I have, oh, I have, I have a folder on World War II, and here's a folder of pictures, uh, pictures of posters from World War II, and this is from the co Owens Company, and oh, 001.tif, and then, oh, look, this one's also 001.tif, but it's in the Red Cross folder. Well, what would happen if this got moved out of this folder altogether? Right? There's no descriptive information on the file itself. So this is a folder, 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 right? But the file itself should have enough information for you to know what it is. Okay? All right, write that down. Everything in red gets written down. All right, rule number five, include a two-digit version number. All right, so, so let's say uh, you're working on a project like a collage or something, and it's going to take you a long time. Okay? And you've been working on it for a couple of days, and it's like, uh... I, I should probably keep a, keep a backup just in case, right? So then so you'll work on V1, 
for a little bit, and then you're going to make a copy of it and paste it, and you're going to name it V2, and then you're going to start working on V2. So version, if version 2 gets corrupted or lost or ruined or you do something bad to it, well, you can always jump back to version 1. So it's just kind of a safety precaution. So it's a good idea on large time-consuming projects to have a backup version of it. Okay. Um, rule number six, be consistent. So you need to come up with your own plan for how you're going to organize stuff, but stay, just stick with it and stay consistent. So if, like, for example, if you're going to start off with, oh, what is the main subject? Main subject, and then all of a sudden, oh, the style of thing. Oh, wait, we go posters, then we have the subject. So don't flip-flop, okay? Be consistent. However, however you choose to do it, be consistent. Okay, rule number seven. So you, you see there's no spaces, but I use capital letters at the beginning of each new word, and it's easy to read even though there's no spaces. That keeps it condensed and compressed, but easy to read. Um, rule number eight, stay organized with folders that are also named well. So if you look over here, I made one mistake over here, but it's not too bad. Um, so you can see like, oh, I have a bunch of classes. So this is my creative computers class. Um, this is the unit for composition of photography. It's the assignment, take five photos. So all, all my folders are very organized and then my files are also named well. Okay, so leave the file extension alone. So we talked about that .pdf. If you get rid of that .file extension, the computer won't know what that file is and won't know what to open with it with. So number nine, leave file extensions alone. All right, so rule number 10. So one time, unfortunately, my parents passed away, and I, made, I was making a slideshow for my mom and my dad. And when, as I was doing this, I realized that, man, I, I did the slideshow wrong because it took me like twice as long to do it as it should have. And what I did wrong is I didn't keep my files and folders organized well. So what I should have done was number one, figure out how long I wanted it to be. For example, if I wanted it to be five minutes long and each image, I wanted each picture to stay up on the screen for seven seconds, that would mean I could get 42 pictures. So what I should have done is sorted through, first of all, and chose my 42 pictures I wanted. And then got the rest of the ones I didn't want to use, put those in like a different folder, like pictures not used. And then I could have gone through and of those 42, I could have edited the pictures I needed to. And then the other thing that would have been helpful is to number them at the beginning, like 001, 002, because then I could see like, oh, here's the order I want to put them in. And that also would help me to organize because once I once I started putting way too many pictures into the slideshow and then started rearranging them, it was really unwieldy and it would have been a lot faster to do it differently. So um, so when making a slideshow, get the pictures in order by numbering the file name at the beginning. So if you look at these things right here, you can see that I ordered them 001, 002 is missing for some reason, 003, which doesn't matter, 004, 005, 006. And so when, when I throw them into the slideshow, it's going to put them in that exact same order. And when I go over here to... Uh, if you go into details, you can see I can I can sort it by the date they were taken, the type of picture, the size. But what I want to do is order them by name, one to six, or I can go the opposite, six to one. But that keeps them in order. Okay, good. Now let's keep going. Write that everything down in red. Here's examples: 001, 002, and then to get your points, make sure you take the notes, complete the. And then now I want you to complete the assignment called name your five photos. And then in class, I'm going to quiz you on this stuff live.